When you do not know what you want, look to where you are bored, frustrated, lost, stuck, and hurting. Those are the spaces in which life is asking you to release one of your limiting ways, a thought, a belief, a pattern that is asking you to let go, to open, to see things from a new perspective, a more full truth, a place that does not settle you down, but sets you free. We think that our destinies are informed by our dreams, that we stumble upon the lives that we're meant for because they sound good or seem good, or we imagine them to feel a certain way, or they are the first thing that crossed our minds when we imagined what our futures may be. But the truth is that destiny is very often brought to our awareness through catalyst moments that on the surface seem so uncomfortable we can't wade through them. It's just pain and chaotic and circling thoughts. But at the root of it all is a window, a window into the fact that we are not yet in alignment with the people we are meant to be. And so we have received our assignment. The trigger is the assignment. Now, you first have to learn to regulate and neutralize your nervous system because the state of your nervous system colors and informs the way you see all of life and the entire world. So when you are in any kind of triggered state in that moment, that is actually the time to gather information. Not even necessarily to find a solution, but just to gather information. So get out a journal and write down, and I don't care how like, nonsensical it seems, write it all down what you are feeling, what you are thinking, how you arrived there, and be honest. Write it all out until you feel calm again, and then take a break from it. And then go back to it when you're able to look at it critically, because encoded in the breakdown is what you need to know in order to make a breakthrough. Every time I have ever felt absolutely overwhelmed by something in my life, I have stopped and reminded myself the things I struggle with most are the ones I am here to master. I tell people all of the time, I'm not a naturally emotionally intelligent person, but because that is the case, the gift that I was given was an opportunity because I had to consciously kind of trace my steps to get to this place and teach myself to be hopefully more intelligent, <laughs> hopefully more emotionally intelligent, or at least than I was before, because I have had to consciously trace my steps and teach myself to hopefully be at least a little more emotionally intelligent than I was before. So I am conscious of what emotional intelligence is in a way that I wouldn't be if I was naturally born with a higher degree of it, because it's the experience of quote unquote, not having, and then building, finding, formulating, committing, devoting, and changing that brings you into this kind of new, golden, beautiful state of being where what you get in the end is better than if you had started out with that thing at the beginning. So when you are in a highly triggered state, it's because you are very stuck. You have either consciously or unconsciously, usually both, established impediments to the organic flow of life. But the river of life never stops moving. We actually exist in a constant flow state of ideas, inspiration, solutions, and opportunities. We are not ever meant to be pinned down beneath hopelessness. So the first step of gaining wisdom is being able to look at the journey of deconstructing those impediments to flow as our greatest and clearest opportunities for growth and self-realization and all the things that come with that, all of the peace, all of the joy, all of the fulfillment. But it's tricky because the impediments are tempting. They're very compelling. And at times the blocks seem permanent and inevitable and unchangeable. And that is when our internal climate becomes the most volatile. 
when one part of us is attempting to keep the impediment in place and another is begging us to just let it go. We know that this is happening because though things might seem relatively stable on the surface, we are living with this kind of lingering sense of anxiety, tension, fear that might come in waves, builds, diminishes our energy levels, and over time inevitably collapses us onto ourselves. You know, eventually we hit a tipping point and we have to finally face, finally look in the eye what had kind of been stopping us up all along. And when we get to that point, that that trigger moment, that decimated state, which is what it feels like, we think that it is hopeless. This is hopeless. But it's not. Because in that moment, what's actually happening is that a new life is banging at the door, trying to break down your walls. It is asking to be let in. And it is asking you to stop confusing what's holding you back for what's holding you up. Because that's why you are keeping the impediment in the first place. That's why you're fighting for it. That's why you can't let it go because you think it's somehow essential to your own functioning or your happiness or your sanity. Because at the end of the day, the blocks we can't let go of are coping mechanisms we developed when we had no other way to deal with some kind of challenge or stressor. But deep down, you know, there is another way and it's time to move on to that. And at the end of the day, the only thing that has truly constructed the impediment to your flow state is fear. Fear is the building block. Fear is the essence of what an impediment is. When we engage in fear, we make an agreement with the fear to feed it and keep it alive. It cannot exist without our input, our mental entertainment, our permission, our allowance, our engagement, because it is not conscious. And so it requires our consciousness to stay alive. When we choose not to interact with it, when we withdraw the offering of our attention, even in even if the fear pulls at our nervous systems, asking us to re-engage, we begin to find that it weakens. It weakens every time we choose not to. Fear controls us when we invest more of ourselves into the problem than the solution. Fear is a compulsive state in which we are stuck from motion, from action, where we think that moving forward will hurt worse than staying where we are. And that is part of the illusion. It keeps us stuck by making us think that the river of life is what is going to cause us pain or that by confronting the grief or cleaning up our side of the street, we will somehow engender ourselves to a greater suffering than what we are experiencing now. But it just simply is not true. The river of life is not the pain source. It's our disengagement from it, that is. Life itself is not scary, but the idea that a wound could inspire us to withhold ourselves from living it again, that is. That we could die before we are dead. That we could turn a loss and what was really meant to be a lesson into a lifetime of pain because our cognitive function is making us think in such a way that keeps the impediment firmly in place. This is where we never learn to act, even while uncomfortable, and so we never move on. When you are most afraid, what you have to constantly remind yourself is that nothing presses us to release it unless something else is waiting to arrive. If the river weren't flowing from behind the impediment, then you wouldn't feel the pressure to allow it to come apart and to release itself in time. We think we build or choose the aspects of our lives, like we find the person we want to be with, we stumble upon the great idea, we get the opportunity, but in truth, we respond to those things. We don't force their arrival because they are always en route. The doors are opening in every moment, but we have to choose what we walk through. And when the only door we are familiar with is fear, 
we often end up staying right where we are until we forget our ability to choose altogether. We think that the only reality is the one we've known, not realizing that we've known so many different realities. We've had so many problems that we once thought we would never get over that do not even once pass through our minds today. And that is what you have to remember. All the things you once obsessed over, you thought about them one day for the very last time, and you didn't even know it was the last. And you were able to do that because you kept going. And that is your living, breathing, personal proof that you can get through this too, that you can change, that you can learn, that you can reinterpret rock bottom as a fresh slate. And that doesn't mean it's not going to hurt, but it it means you're going to choose to make something of the hurt because the hurt is kind of inevitable. We're, We're human. But what's not inevitable is what we do with it. And what we do with it often starts really small. Motion begets motion. Momentum feeds upon itself. Because momentum is actually a process of us lifting the impediments to action, both small and large, and allowing, allowing, allowing the flow. So it's far simpler than we think it is moving on. You know, when we have a routine or we establish a routine in literally anything, we have created a set of actions that we have no resistance to because we have practiced them without impairing their flow. Once we get used to them, the flow seems obvious and even preferred, and we begin to crave the feeling. And that's why routines can be so important and productive because anything that comfortably re engages you with the real life act of living begins to lift the impediments to flow. That is why brilliant ideas pop up from nothingness after a long walk. Why we remember that thing we meant to do and suddenly feel the compulsion to do it. Only after we've completed an unrelated but likewise important task or chore. That is why. Because we have begun to move ourselves out from beneath the illusion of stuckness and back to the actual rhythm of existing. It is the only way to move on. It is all life's waiting for you to do is start to re-engage with the flow state. Start to see that the people, things, and opportunities you are waiting for are around you now. And in the end, what you have to remember is that the things that pose the hardest challenges to you are also the ones you are most meant to overcome. And so every single time you think you are running up against a wall, hitting it again and again, and like you'll never see the other side, remember that your job is not to push through, but actually to pioneer a new way around, to find a new route to the other side, and then to go there and to be there. Because the things you struggle with most are the ones you are here to master. The things you don't have and badly want are the mountain you are called to climb and the trail you leave behind in your own pursuit of self-actualization and healing will inevitably become the guideline you give to other people to do the same whether you realize you're doing it or not and that is how pain becomes purpose